Hello guys, I'm Orbator and welcome because we are now traveling towards Lathe. In fact, we're going to be landing a rover and um, a lander and a load of kerbals that you have requested to be added. And I hope you enjoy the new texture pack that I've added. It does make look jewel look like it's in a, under a heat wave or something, but that does fit because we're under a heat wave here in the UK. If you don't know, we've had, was it two weeks of hot weather or more? That's unheard of, especially this time of year. We've normally got rain every other week, so uh, go figure. Anyway, with global warming aside, let's go on to uh, land these kerbals on lathe. First off, we have to do some jiggery pokery. I've set used a kerbal alarm clock to make sure that I don't miss any of the action. And also, I fixed the probes as well on this mission, so that the little probes that are hanging on here as we decouple Wang, should be working. The decoupler is not at full force, so it won't smash into the spaceship. However, um, uh, past me has not figured out how to stop the fuel from draining from there. I know it's an easy way, you just right click on the decouplers and disable fuel crossfeed, which is where I left on for some odd and bizarre reason. Okay, so we'll have to fix that. We'll have to manually transfer fuel across to those tanks, as you can see by here. Right, we've got one in orbit. The idea of these were sort of like uh, observation platforms, communications and whatnot around the dual system, so we can keep all the Kerbals communicating with Kerbin and make sure that they're definitely going to get home. Okay, so this decouple this one. Each pro has about, was it 2,300 meters per second? I can't remember off the top of my head because pff, I'm terrible at remembering things. I have a memory like a goldfish. Anyway, we are going to be sending these probes in orbit around some of the moons. And yes, this does happen. The fairings destroy one of the solar panels. And it only happens in two of them for some odd reason. Yeah, a little redesign required there now. But however, these seem to operate okay on one solar cell. What I'm going to be doing, one of these, I'm going to be sending to the moon lathe. The other two, I forgot to refuel, so one's going to be slingshotting past Tylo, as we're on a slingshot past Tylo at this very moment, and then go exit the dual system. So, um, yeah, uh, that was on purpose. That was so it could escape lathe and stay as a communication satellite near lathe, and it won't be obstructed by any of the moons. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, explanations aside, let's get these on their way. And also I renamed these. One probe is called Orbiter, because vanity. The other one is called Larry, uh, because it's orbiting lathe, as we got over here. Just a couple of hundred meters per second to get into elliptical orbit. And we should still have over a thousand meters per second left to go to the other moons. Talking about lathe as well. I figured this moon needs more particular attention than a single or dual episode. I think this one will have to do something like Lave or Bust. I should put an echo in there. Please remember my post editing mark. But what I want to do is your Kerbals will be sent there. Don't worry if you ask to be Kerbal. However, I want the Lave mission to be a bit more spectacular, as in We'll be sending a lander to land on land, a little mobile rover base, perhaps a bit bigger than the rovers that we've sent so far on the Julian missions, and a, a water base. I may do an air base if you guys want that. Don't forget that will include mods for that one. And a submersible base. But all Kerbals must be able to return. So that means, especially the underwater base, that is going to be the hardest. That means we're going to have to sort of jettison the load, let that float to the surface, and then fly the rocket up to space. Or we'll have a rocket on the surface there waiting for them to catch and then make their way home to Kerbin. Anyway, that aside, and glitches and all, everything, because this, I don't know if everybody has this. I'm not sure if it's because of mods. The parts that I'm using by here aren't mods, they're part of the DLC that come with Curb, Kerbal Space Program. Well, it doesn't come with, you have to pay the extra, but buy it now because it's on offer. Uh, sorry, console user, but it should be coming shortly to you guys. Anyway, let's first off, we've got both the rover and the lander ships 
in orbit. Let's get these down to the surface. First one we're going to do is land the rover. That way we know where the base is going to be, or roughly. It doesn't matter that we're not so precise because we've got an automatic pilot on this rover. I put Megship on there, and that's because Megship has an awesome feature, which is the rover autopilot, and you'll be able to tell it to go to waypoints. It'll go to those waypoints. You can set the speed so that it doesn't go too fast. That'll flip out. That means you can set it. You can go have a shower, have a cup of tea, and then come straight back up, which is exactly what I did, and it should be safe. Just make sure you don't set the rover speed over the limit. And also, don't forget to apply brake on energy depletion. Which is a bit weird, because it sort of works. Not all the time. If you're on a hill, it seems to go forward, stop because of the depleted electricity. Electricity recharges, it'll go forward a slight bit, but because it's on a hill, it'll drag back down before braking. So then, basically, come backwards. Anyway, let's talk a bit more about what's going on screen. As you can see, we're coming in at 50 kilometers or so, I can't remember off the top of my head, but we've done an almost continuous burn coming down. You could register that as a, a suicide burn, just leaving a little leeway for when you're coming down close to the surface that you can come down softly and not tip over in the wrong direction, because we need to tip this over forward. We'll almost lose this, but to couple at the right time. And hey, presto, the rover is on the surface. Let's test out that autopilot. So, as I said, MechJeb has an awesome uh, autopilot function for rovers. And I have to test the aircraft autopilot at some point. And you set waypoints. There's a waypoint button on there, so set your waypoints, set the speed, set it to drive, and hey, presto, it'll go to the point that you told it to do a slow turn because it slows down for the turns very safe feature and then hey presto awesome that gives me an idea I think we need to do a thumbnail some of you may have already seen this because this is all post uh, commentating or whatever you call it but anyway I already posted a picture of this on YouTube perhaps I should do it on Twitter I'm trying to be a bit more active on Twitter mainly space news uh, was thinking perhaps I could ask you guys uh, any achievements you want me to post on Twitter? I don't know. I'm mean, I've got a big Twitter account, so I'd have to grow it first before it become, you know, awesome. He posted my picture, and loads of people have seen it. It's not the case at the moment. You always get those ones on Twitter which sort of like follow you, they're. Uh, they expect to follow back, and they, they don't really have any interesting content. However, I, if you have, KBM, I think, is the last person who followed me on Twitter. Lately. <laughs> Just because I've been a bit more active, I suppose. Anyway, coming in for landing. And then, anyway, how did you find me, KBM? Hmm, it's interesting. <laughs> right, with this one, i done a mistake. <clears throat> I made sure there was enough Delta V on you to land and take off. However, i done a really, really quick burn, because we're coming over the rover, I thought, let's do a big burn and land as close to the rover as possible, so it doesn't have so far to go. So that means i had done a large burn while we're in orbit, which is a mistake. I think it used a lot more fuel than I anticipated, and perhaps my landing is not, on Tylo especially, is not what it should be. Anyway, here are the Kerbals who've been asked to be added. Walter Kerman. And here, Eve, I did not forget you, Kerbal. Eve Kerman. Here she is. In all her awesomeness. <laughs> Falling out of the capsule. And Crash Fast Kerman. With a name slightly off the screen, which I'm not going to, to test Kerman, which I created because I needed a test subject. Stranded Kerman. Uh, if name fits, I think, at the moment, because we need to send a rescue mission. Jeff Kerman. A mission is not a mission without a Jeff. And then Aragon Kerman. I think he's come here because he wants to fight the Kraken. But he's on the wrong moon. And Vishnu. Vishnu? Vishnu. Vishnu. Kerman. <laughs> okay, so, anyway, we've got all the Kerbals out. We know where they are. 
Let's set a waypoint for the rover. It's one straight line should do. Start driving. Let's put it to 15 so it doesn't take too long. And obviously this takes so long. That at some points when I was looking after it, I used Hyper Air. And did you see the lander jumping? I have no idea. I thought that glitch was, glitch was fixed for KSP, where you'd load in a craft and it would jump because it's slightly clipping the floor. And yes, we just about missed one of the Kerbals by doing a wheelie. That was awesome driving. Obviously, that was a mistake. I was never meant to hit any of the Kerbals. I was trying not to hit them. And luckily, trying not to hit them succeeded in not hitting them by accident. If that makes sense. Anyway, using the Kerbal follow -up. how many- I thought it was four Kerbals we could fit in this cockpit. That's for the space plane. Yeah, you carry on walking in one spot there. <laughs> so we put Crash Fast, obviously, in the cockpit and Eve Kerman, because... Yeah, why not? And Walter. Uh, there's no room for you, Walter, so... Yeah, he's just there to make sure that the hatch is secure. Retract the ladder and then run away because Crash Fast is driving. Now, I've been trying to think of actual science that we can do in this game because all I'm doing at the moment is I'm going to these places, I'm landing on it, which is cool, but then once you land on it, that's the cool factor over, then you might as well just quickly just get the Kerbals back. However, on this one, we need to send a rescue mission because we're out of Delta V to get into orbit. I know because I tested it, quick save, tested it out, and the launch system does not have enough Delta V. Uh, yeah, we could do this kind of science, as in, see how resilient this rover is on a lower gravity moon. But what I want to do is do actual science. You gather data, find, you know, all this magna or here or something like that. Let me know if there's a mod there for that. Perhaps I could add it just to make a bit more interest. Otherwise, the only science we can do is see if these rocks are solid or are they um, not solid. As we found out by here. Luckily that was not solid, otherwise I think Crash Fast would have succeeded in killing himself and Eve Kerman. Anyway, this is the end of this video. Hopefully we'll send a rescue mission at some point. And um, yeah, trust me, I'm an engineer. <laughs>